when you first got to Ohio State, how long after that did you look at the, um, say, the highlights of the 2017 class? And then um, what were your first thoughts on JK when you saw those highlights? Again, I thought they were good, but it was um, it was junior highlights because, you know, he, he got injured. So uh, uh, just looked dynamic, didn't know him personally. Uh, good, but we saw him he, when I showed up, he was already here. So it's really just more about seeing him in the uh, winter workouts uh, and really how mature, uh, how well spoken, how you know, polished he was as a person. So, uh, so again, it was probably you, know, you saw a clip or two, but it was a long time ago. I was just impressed the way he started with the with the winter workouts, and those are pretty demanding. And for a young kid, he, he did great. Mm -hmm. um, this I'd week, say too, Mike Weber was having a great winter and a great summer. It really was to his, to his hand. And that really, I yeah. think, helped J.K. come along. Even though you haven't seen Mike play that much, Mike was awesome through spring and, and winter. We get him back. I, I would like to see him pick up where he was. I think that was a huge. I talked to to Coach Alfred about that. But I think that was a huge thing for, uh, for J.K. Coach Meyer said, uh, I think on Monday, that when he get when Weber gets back, he's going to be rewarded. What does that mean? Does he does he go back into the starting lineup? No, I mean I hadn't thought about it. I don't know what you know. No, he. he yeah, he's going to be rewarded because again, I think I, I, I just I trust with, with the winter he had, the summer he had going, spring, summer he had going. He's missed a little bit of time. Hopefully, he'll get kind of like Marcus Ball. The more Marcus is kind of back now, he's getting stronger. Might take him a little bit back to get his practice volume and game volume uh, uh, up. But he was ha he was having an awesome deal to injury. Uh, we're going to try to work hard this week to keep bringing him along. And hopefully, get him in the mix. Soon. Coach, we've heard a lot about you know, the run pass option and how well that fits JT's strengths, but we've also heard a lot about how Dwayne Haskins needs to be brought along. And he he kind of has a different skill set, um, with stronger arm, which seems to be more of a drop back passer. How do you differentiate getting JT ready um, and game planning for his strengths, but also bringing Dwayne Haskins along when he might have a different skill set? I think the, the way over time some things offensively have evolved because it's I think years ago, if you really had one quarterback that was run oriented and one quarterback that wasn't, it was like two different offenses. Right now, the difference is you can maybe block the read key and let the throw guy read a linebacker or a safety or perimeter player. And if you have a running guy, you can maybe have him read the defensive end and be a run threat. So, but the linemen are blocking the same play. So it's really not a new play. There might be a subtle adjustment, and then you play on a kitchen. And we're doing it with JT right now. JT has run options, he has throw options, and when, when Dwayne's in the other night, Dwayne had a couple run options, even the few plays he had where there's a run choice. So, you know, you play to the strength of the guys. If there's, we're, it's kind of, we kind of, I think a lot of us years ago stumbled into some things. It's not two different offenses, and that really helps left guard, outside receivers, because it helps those players bring along. So, uh, it's not that big a deal, personally, just just play what the kid can do. Kevin, uh, uh, Coach Meyer said yesterday, you know, he was going to give a directive, or he gave a directive. I mean, he'd like to see more of the run pass option. Have y'all have y'all found have y'all gotten into something here that you think really fits the personnel? I mean, what's 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 your what's your feel on that coming out of the uh, the, the Army game and headed into this? We didn't really um, there wasn't a whole lot of change. It was just emphasis of things that were there, yeah. um, trying to get a direction on where to get started and get moving. Where again, I felt coming out of preseason, the first couple of games, I allowed it to of all the ideas to maybe just get watered down and all over the place. We didn't take anything out. I think we just looked at what we thought would be best to attack the structure of Army's defense. And each week it's a different structure. Mm -hmm. It'll be who you're blocking. Um, it's different stress points, who the, who the issues of who you can and can't block and the coverage guys and spaces or, or, or whatever you're trying to do. So each week you emphasize different things. We just tried to, to just trim it down to get a little direction, to get a little confidence in practice, to take that to the game field. We started okay and we had a couple lulls in the second quarter, a couple calls didn't get us, that's a little bit out of whack. Uh, but for the most part, um, you know, the guys played well, and just the emphasis of just trying to get started with the direction. Have you I don't seen no stumbling? Yeah. It's just, it's just yeah, I didn't mean point. stumbling. I mean, you know, you had it in the you know arsenal, yeah. so to speak. But is JT well suited to run to run that a lot? I mean, what's your take on that? Because that's kind of what Coach Meyer said. You know, it kind yeah, of plays I, to his strengths. Well, yeah, I think he like a lot of really running guys can't throw. A lot of throw guys can't run. I think JT's kind of pretty adequate at both. I mean, there's some guys who are going to be actually more dynamic runners because he knows a good running quarterback. There's guys that, like, you know, the bigger guys like Tebow and Cam Newton were bigger, more powerful. You got the real fast guys. I mean, he's a solid, adequate runner. He's a solid, adequate passer. I think you put them both together, and when both things get working, he makes our offense complete. And, uh, you know, I think you, you, know, you can say, hey, a guy has a strong arm. A guy could be uh, uh, a better runner. To me, he's kind of very adequate at both, and when we get both going, I think it's when we're at our best. So.
What kind of challenges do UNLV's defense present? You know, it's a little, again, because they, they started out, they had an open day week. Uh, they started in the four-man truck structure. You look, you're looking at last year's stuff. They've started out with Idaho and Howard. They struggled in the first game, gave up points. Uh, Cam Newton's brother had a tremendous game for Howard, by the way, for what it's worth. But they bounced back the next week. Went, they traveled to Idaho, got after them. Uh, they got nothing loose. So to me, we got it's kind of like uh, last week. We thought Army would come in and blitz every play from all angles. Maybe these guys don't blitz, but we're going to be ready to adjust. We're trying to keep our direction, move forward, build on it, and we need to be ready to adjust and adapt. Do you, have a, do you have a meeting time set for when the decision on the number two quarterback will be made? Like, is it Thursday at 8? I mean, do you know? Do you know? Until we show up at 7. <laughs> I mean, just, I'm just, just trying to get the offense going. And I, you know, I'm very comfortable. I mean, Dwayne played well. Joe's back going. Tate has been outstanding. Did phenomenal the last couple weeks in our scout team prep. Has been recognized by the coaches, by his peers. He's coming along. There's a good vibe. I think we talked, I made a comment last week. It was really good to see um, Dwayne have a great week of practice when a lot of people are talking. And we've only had hey, one Dwayne, day, but we had a good go today. Out of here. So would, would it be a coin flip? And what, what, what would it be? Would it be a game? Would it be an in game kind of decision? I mean, would. Do you like to go into a game with a pecking order just in case? Yeah, I think Coach Day and Coach Meyer, you know, you know they're, my, my deal is seeing the big picture in tight ends. Yeah. And Ryan, Ryan's awesome, and, and again, they're both getting work. Dwayne now's played in, you know, a few snaps a game. Joe's played, I think, a little last year. So uh, we'll, we'll see. You know, tough deal is we started some games we haven't played well, and la that last game was, was because of the dynamic of the game. We haven't had a chance to, to play some young guys as much as you'd like, but we've also played some three really good teams, and we've been battle tested. And, but it would be great in, in time to keep bringing the young guys along. Speaking of tight ends, Rashad Berry was in there early last week. I mean, uh, in the nitty gritty. Well, we felt he's doing, he's coming. Uh, so is Luke. I felt he had the better week of practice. Uh, this week is quite honestly, uh, I can tell you that one because I know that decision. Uh, the guy that goes first will, will be the guy that has the best week of special teams practice. And so who does? Coach Combs is going to tell me which one of those tight ends goes first this week as far as the backup. Last week we were doing a lot of tempo, a lot of fast stuff, and we're doing a lot of stuff where we didn't spread it out in 10 personnel, yeah. so we needed a tight end. I thought Rashad had the best week of prep. He went first, Luke got uh, some plays, Jake Kalsman got in uh, this week. I expect them all to play, especially the top three, and uh, I'll let Coach Combs decide which one goes. Thank you, uh, Thank you very Second. much.